Hey everyone, my name is Carl. Thank you for joining us today. Park Valley College is an opportunity for anyone that desires to deepen their relationship with God and knowledge of the Bible, or anyone who desires to prepare for Christian ministry. Our programs are designed to challenge you spiritually through concentrated study of God's Word and practical application in the church and community. Our next term starts at the end of August. If this is something you want to participate in, then you can find out what classes are offered and how to apply it on our website. We have some great ways for you to enrich your marriage coming up. On August 23rd, there'll be a Couples Connect date night. You'll go out for the evening with your spouse and then you'll join everyone back at Park Valley for an evening to learn how to improve your relationship with your spouse today and all the days ahead. And then starting out on the first Sunday in September, we have the Art of Marriage class. It's a six week class that brings in expert teaching and engaging stories to portray both the challenges and the beauty of God's design for marriage. Hi, my name is Allison and I'm the Connect Group Coordinator for Student Ministries here at Park Valley Church and we are in the season of kicking off our Connect Groups. The Park Valley Kids team is excited to start the second year of Kids Small Groups, but spaces are limited, so be sure to register your child today. We also have Connect Groups for middle school students that meet off-site throughout the week. And finally, high school is launching Connect Group Night on the first and third Sunday starting September 15th. So if your high schooler is looking for a way to grow in their faith in a small group setting, we will meet here at the church and then break them up into small groups all throughout the building. And this is all made possible by our amazing volunteers that give their time to pour into our kids. But we do need help. So if you're interested, we are looking for leaders for KSG, middle school, and high school connect groups. Check out the website for more information. There's all kinds of things going on at Park Valley Church and we'd hate for you to miss out. So be sure to check out the events page on our website, go to the info bar in the lobby, or you can download our app. Thanks so much for being here today. We hope you have a great week. Good morning. Thank you all for being here. It, it's been an exciting weekend at Park Valley. Um, yesterday, we had a clothing for kids event, and some of you all brought clothes and stuff last week. We did a clothing drive. Some of you bring them on a regular basis. We've been collecting for months. But yesterday, we had a, a clothing for kids event, and we had nearly 2,000 people show up here Saturday morning to, to receive free clothing. And with as much clothes as we had by 1030, it started at 9, by 1030, all the clothes were gone. You know, and so thank you all so much for your generosity and stepping up and just helping to share, share the love of Christ in this community, and that's important that we do that. Uh, if you're watching online, thanks for being here today, and thanks for, for tuning in. Um, and then you may have noticed when you came in that there are some guys in, in uh, jerseys out there, softball jerseys, and uh, they're out there. We've got, we've got a softball uh, team here, we, actually four teams. If we have enough people sign up, we'll do five teams or six teams, but there's a church league here in Prince William County, and we're part of that. So if softball interests you, go see one of those guys in the jerseys, and uh, they can answer all your questions. The, the season starts here real soon. If you want to be a part of that, just hook up with them, and they'll, they'll help you out. Now, my name's John, and I am the Connect Group pastor here, so a big part of my job is, is encouraging people to sign up for Connect Groups, and we believe that, that uh, God designed us to do life in community. You know, we're designed to do life with other people, and you can't grow spiritually outside, uh, the, the, um, outside of, of godly relationships, you know. That's part of God's plan, that we have people in our life that influence us and to, to grow and become more like Christ, part of His plan. Everything we're told to do in the Scripture revolves around being involved in relationships, you know. And one of the easiest parts of my job is encouraging women to be a part of groups, because women get it. Women understand, and lots of women are doing this right now because they understand the necessity of having other women in their life that are going to help them and are going to encourage them and, and understand how they feel and understand what they think. One of the hardest parts of my job is encouraging men to be a part of groups, okay? And guys, let's be honest, it's not, because we, it's not a time thing. It's not because we don't have time to be involved in a group because whatever is important to us, we'll make time for Okay? That's not the issue. But one of the, the issue is really a fundamental difference between men and women, and, it's, and it has everything to do with the way we, are, we were created. Okay? In the womb, when a child, when it's biologically determined that the child is going to be a boy or girl, if it's going to be a boy, there is an enzyme released into the womb that destroys a connective tissue between the two hemispheres of the brain. Okay? Ladies are laughing because they know boys are born brain damaged, okay? <laughs> There's no way around it. Ladies, cut us some slack, okay? We are born brain damaged. That tissue is, is destroyed, okay? So, and, but that, that creates some fundamental differences between men and women, 
all right? Create some fundamental differences between men and women, one of them being the fact that men can focus Because they don't have that connection between the two hemispheres, they can focus more on one thing. Women are more aware of their surroundings and more aware of relationships and feelings because of that. But that's why, you know, a husband can sit and stare at a television and watch a football game uninterrupted for four hours while the kids are right next to him killing each other. And he does not look away. He doesn't know what's going on. Mom, on the other hand, is on the other side of the house doing three or four things at the same time. And she knows that the kids are fighting. Okay? Even though she's not in the room, she knows because she is more aware of her surroundings because God designed her that way. You know, because of that connective tissue between the two hemispheres of the brain, women are more relational. Okay? They're more orient, they're they're more driven by by feelings and emotions. You know, men men are less relational. Men are, because of that difference, they are more likely to choose isolation over insulation. Women like to insulate. If something's going wrong, they like other women around them that, that understand how they feel and what they're going through. Okay? Men like to isolate. Something's going wrong, we go to the man cave, we go to the garage, we like to be alone, we process it. There's part of that that's good for a man, but, but to live in isolation is terrible for a man. Okay? And if you look at our Connect Group ministry, you know, if you look at the numbers, we have twice as many women's groups as we do men's groups. Okay? There are couples groups in there too, but as far as men's groups and women's groups go, there are twice as many men's group, or women's groups as there are women, men's groups. You say, well, that's not terrible, but if you look at it, the average number of women in a group is 10 to 12. The average number of men in a group is 4 to 6. So really, there is four times as many women involved in groups than there are men. So if I have 1,000 women involved in women, women's groups at Park Valley Church, I only have 250 men involved. Okay? And so men are, men are less inclined to be part of a group dynamic, and that's, that's part of the way we were created. It's not healthy. We, we all need men in our life. We all need men in our life. And so men, we need to be intentional about surrounding ourselves by a band of brothers that are going to encourage us to be the man God created us to be, to be a better man, a better husband, a better father. We need men in our life that are going to do that. Okay? And, and so today, I'm going to talk, everything I say is applicable to everybody in this room, but I'm going to, sp- I'm going to speak specifically to men, and I don't, mean to, I don't mean to leave anyone out, and I certainly don't mean to offend anyone, but like I said, men are just less inclined to this, to, to, to be part of this, and they need more encouragement. So I want to encourage men today. And ladies, you can help me out, okay? Because you, you can do some things that will really help this situation. If there's a man in your life, your husband, your father, your son, whoever, fiance, boyfriend, whatever, and you, you want to see him grow spiritually, and you know he needs a band of brothers, okay? Here, here's what not to do. Don't tell him to join a group, okay? All right? Don't tell him because, you know, we, we know it's right. We know every time you tell us to do something, it's probably the right thing, but we just don't do it because we're men and we're knuckleheads, all right? And I, and I want to prove that to you. Okay, so ladies, I'm going to take a quick poll, all right? Ladies, if there's a man in your life, husband, father, brother, son, whatever, and in the last year you have talked to him about the way he eats, would you lift your hand? Okay, now leave it up. Don't put it down until I say to. Leave your hand up. Okay, guys, don't pull their hands down. Let them leave it up, all right? Okay, leave your hand up. Ladies, if you have have talked to your husband about the way he drives in the last year, put your hands up. Keep your hands up. The way he eats, the way he drives, okay? If you've talked to your husband about how much time he spends looking at his phone or the television last year, put your hand up, okay? All right, everybody, keep those hands up. Now listen, if it worked, leave your hand up. Everybody else, put your hand down. If it worked, leave your hand up. See, there's no hands, okay? There's no hands because we don't listen. So let's assume for the sake of encouraging your husband or your father or whoever to be involved in a band of brothers, let's assume that, that it's not going to work for you to tell him to do that. So don't tell him, don't nudge him, don't say amen in the middle of the sermon when I say something that sounds like your husband, okay? Don't do that. What you can do, though, is, is be an encouragement to him and make it easy for him to go to these, to, to, to be involved in a group of men, Okay? You know, it's a time thing. He has to decide, this is important, I'm going to sign up for this group of men and I'm going to be dedicated to it. So when he chooses that time, you do everything you can to make it convenient for him to go. You know, help, help, him, help him keep the distractions away. Help, encourage him, you know, that he's doing the right thing. And when he makes that commitment, you let him know how much it means to you that he's made the choice to do something, that he's going to be a better father or a better husband or just a better man, you know. You let him know how much that means to you, all right. And then the best thing you can do for him is you can pray for your husband. Okay, because we just, we just determined it doesn't work for you to tell your husband what you want him to do, but it works when you tell God what you want your husband to do. That works better. Okay, 
Second Peter even says, talking to, to uh, believing women who have unbelieving husbands, Peter says, don't tell them to believe. Pray for them and live a life that they see this is what it means to have a relationship with Jesus. So praying for your husband about this is the best thing you can do. So guys, again, we, we, need, we need to be intentional about being parts of group, uh, part of a group, a, a band of brothers that are going to encourage us and that we can be encouraging to them and we can become better men and better followers of Jesus. And we need this for two reasons. First, when, we're, when, we're, um, when there are other men around us encouraging us, we respond to that. We're designed to. We respond as men. We respond to other men encouraging us. Think about the dumbest thing you did as a kid. And then think about the two or three guys standing behind you going, do it, do it. You know, negative or positive, we respond to men encouraging us. So if you want to grow as a believer, you want to, you want to become more like Jesus, you need men surrounding you that are going to cheer you on and, and encourage you. Secondly, when you're in isolation, that's exactly where Satan wants you, and he does his best work in your life when you're isolated from other people. He does his best work in your life when you're isolated from other people. There's examples in scriptures of that. Okay, Several men. Three in particular, David, Elijah, and Moses all battled depression and all got to the point where they said, I want to die. They had suicidal thoughts, every single one of them. David was on the run in the wilderness from Saul. He was all by himself and he looked up at God and he said, why did you ever create me? It would have been better that I had never been born. Why don't you take me out right now? Elijah, after his victory over the 400 prophets of Baal, was on the run from Ahab And he's in the wilderness alone. God's taking care of his needs. God's meeting his needs and keeping him alive. And he looks at God and he says, I'm no better than the the prophets that came before me that that were wicked and, and, and brought shame to your name. I'm no better than them. Why don't you just kill me now? And Moses, in the wilderness with a million people, a million Israelites in the wilderness with Moses, you know, there's certainly people around, but he was alone. He was isolated. He isolated himself because he felt like the people weren't listening to him. And he said, God, it would be better if I had never been born. Why don't you kill me? Satan does his best work when you're in your life when you're by yourself. That's why you need that band of brothers. So I love Moses' uh, Moses story. Love the story of Moses, and it's one we're all familiar with. And uh, uh, you know, we know we know he was born as a Hebrew slave. Um, then he was raised by Pharaoh's daughter. And I think it's cool. Paul talks about it and says that uh, Moses was raised in the courts of Egypt, and he was raised to be a uh, a leader. You know, so he went to the best leadership school in the world at the time, there in the courts of, of Egypt, and God took him out of that and made him a shepherd to teach him how to lead God's people. I think mean, that's pretty awesome. He did the same thing with David. He did it with Joseph. You know, taught them you know, through being a shepherd what it meant to be a leader. But anyway, so he, he leaves Egypt. He goes to Midian and becomes a shepherd, marries, uh, marries his wife Zipporah, and then he comes back. And then there's the, the Ten Plagues, the Red Sea, and the Ten Commandments. We all know the story. Between the Red Sea, and the Ten Commandments. It was about a two or three month span, okay, about two or three months, and a lot happened in those two or three months. You know, the people started getting restless and, and, and already tired of wandering around the wilderness to the point that they said, why don't we go back to Egypt? At least there we had a bed. We didn't have to sleep in sand, you know, at least there we had a place to stay. We had a roof over our head. Later, they came to Moses and they said, hey, there's not enough water, man. We're in the desert, you know, where we're going to get water from. So God told Moses, strike the rock and water came out of the rock. That's cool enough, but think about this. Enough water came out of that rock to quench the thirst of a million people. Enough water came out of that rock to quench the thirst of a million people, okay? So that wasn't enough. Came to Moses and said, hey, we're hungry. There's no food. We're running out of food. What are you going to do about it? So God sent quail and manna, and that in that day, that was as close to Chick-fil-A and Krispy Kreme donuts as you can get. So God was more than generous, and took care, of, took care of their needs. After that, the Amalekites came and attacked them. Okay? They defeated the Amalekites, but all those things happened in just a very short span of time, and Moses was exhausted, and he had had it. And God did something for that man that he will do for every man in this room if we open ourselves up to, to what God has for us. And he brought a man into, to Moses' life that ministered to him. That man was his father-in-law, Jethro. So I'm going to look at that relationship between Jethro and Moses and point out some things that we need as men if we're going to grow as believers and we're going to develop that band of brothers around us that are going to help us become more like Christ, okay? And we're going to look in Exodus uh, uh, chapter uh, 18, and we're going to look at um, 
that relationship. And I've called this sermon man up. Okay, when I say that, you know, we're all familiar with that term, but when I say that, I don't mean act like a man. What I mean is kind of like on, you know, on the cop shows when they have the, the criminal in the, in the interrogation room and then they, he says, I want to see my lawyer. The cops go, well, he lawyered up. Okay, he found, he found a lawyer. Okay, so we're going to man up. We're going to find men that are, that are going are gonna to surround us and that are going to help us to become more like Christ. So when we man up, the first thing we need, if we're going to man up, I've lost my place in my notes already. If we, uh, there we go. If we're going to man up, the first thing we need is a, a man that will show up. We need a man that will show up. Look at uh, verse 5 of, of chapter 18. Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, now came to visit Moses in the wilderness. He brought Moses' wife and two sons with him, and they arrived while Moses and the people were camped near the mountain of God. Okay, Jethro traveled, uh, traveled to meet him in the wilderness, and, and Jethro wasn't invited. You know, perhaps he had heard uh, through the grapevine that things weren't going well and, and Moses needed someone, so he showed up. He just showed up. And guys, if you go through a difficult time, if you find out tomorrow that you've lost your job or you find out tomorrow that your marriage is in trouble or, or maybe there's a terminal illness or something like that, if there aren't two guys that will show up in your life that will just drop everything and come to you, that's a problem. You need, you need men in your life that will drop everything and come to you in your time of need, whether you ask for it or not. And that doesn't happen in casual relationships. You know, all of us are probably thinking, oh, I got friends, but, you know, we got a lot of casual relationships. You know, we need intimate relationships where we have men in our life that will drop everything to come to us in our time of need. You know, it doesn't happen in casual relationships. So just like Jethro showed up, we need men in our life that are going to show up. If we're going to man up, we need men in our life that are going to listen up, okay? We need men in our life that are going to listen up. Listen to uh, verses 8 and 9. Moses told his father-in-law everything the Lord had done to Pharaoh and in Egypt on behalf of Israel. He also told about all the hardships they had uh, experienced along the way and how the Lord had rescued his people from their troubles. Jethro was delighted when he heard about all the good things the Lord had done for Israel uh, as he rescued them from the hand of the Egyptians, Okay. Jethro took the time to listen and understand what Moses had to say, you know, and, and you know, we've all got, we, we've got women in our life, our wives, our moms, or whoever, we've got women in our life that will listen to us, but the key word there is that Jethro was able to listen and understand, okay, understand, because sometimes men have things to say that, that perhaps a woman doesn't understand because she's not a man. We need a man in our life that we can talk to and be honest to that will listen and understand. Let me give you a little example. You know, this all goes down to the whole, the whole communication thing between men and women is difficult. It's just something difficult to navigate. And it's because it goes back to that, that, you know, basic fundamental difference between men and women. We think differently, therefore we communicate differently. Let me give you a little example of that. When Melinda and I were dating, and Melinda's sitting here, I'm going to say this, and this may be the last sermon I ever preach, but uh, um, no, it's not that bad. But, my, you know, my, when we were dating, we were at Clearwater Christian College, uh, down in, in Florida, and I used to spend a lot of time hanging out around si uh, outside her dorm, and not because I was stalking her. She knew I was there. I was just waiting for her, and we were going to go to lunch together or go to chapel or whatever, so I'd, I'd stand outside her dorm, and I just remember or her dorm, and I just remember one time she walked out, and my wife is gorgeous. She is always beautiful, but this one time, I mean, she was just breathtaking, you know, and she walked out, and, you know, it, it, she just looked beautiful, and it was the 80s, so she had the big hair and the banana clip, and, and uh, you know, <laughs> And she's got these green eyes that are just unbelievable, and, and they, they like change color, you know, based on what she's wearing or where the sunlight hits it or, or, or the mood she's in. She's just these beautiful green eyes. And so I walked up and I said, man, you look gorgeous. Your eyes are the same color as your shirt. Okay, and then she said, really, what color is my shirt? We disagree on this, okay, but I'm no, I'm no genius, but I'm not stupid because I wouldn't have answered the way that I did. She said, what color is my shirt? Now, we're on a different topic. We're no longer talking about her eyes. We're talking about her shirt, and that's why I said olive drab, <laughs> and the women are going, oh, no, okay? I said olive drab because we're talking about her shirt, and, you know, before you judge me, olive drab was the new black in 1988. Everybody was wearing it. Okay, so her shirt was olive drab, but she took that to me in her eyes. Now, you know, I'm, again, I'm not stupid. If I was thinking we were talking about her eyes, I would have said, oh, it's like, they're like liquid emeralds or something. You know, I, I, I would have said something more, far more appropriate than olive drab. But I said olive drab, and I've been living with that for 30 years. But it just shows you, you know, just that one little thing 
is that difference, that difficulty in communication. You know, if I'd been talking to a man, that never would happen, mostly because I wouldn't be talking about a man's eyes. But, <laughs> but we, because, because we're wired differently, we understand each other differently, okay? So we, we need men that will listen and understand, okay? Next, uh, we, we need, as men, if we're going to man up, we need someone that will look up. We need someone that will look up. Look at verses 10 and 11. Praise the Lord, Jethro said, for he has rescued you from the Egyptians and from Pharaoh. Yes, he has rescued you from the powerful hand of Egypt. I know that the Lord, uh, I know now that the Lord is greater than all other gods because he rescued his people from the oppression of the proud Egyptians. Jethro affirmed God's presence in Moses' life. We need men in our life that are going to affirm God's presence in our life. Moses had gone through somewhat of a victory, coming through Egypt, through the, or coming out of Egypt, through the Red Sea, defeating the Amalekites, and, and Moses, or Jethro said, look at what God did in your life. He gave credit where credit is due. You know, we go through a victory, and, you know, we're kind of pumped up and saying, man, look at me. You know, we, we need men in our life that are going to remind us, hey, this isn't about you. This is about God working through you. Okay? We need, we need men that will affirm God's presence in our life. Sometimes we're going to go through tough situations. You know, we're going to go, th- as dads, we're going to go through tough things with our kids. As husbands, we're going to go through tough things with our wives. We're going to go through tough things at work. We're going to face uh, spiritual struggles, you know, hurts, habits, and hang-ups that, that are common to all of us. We're going to face those things. You know, we're, we're, we need men in our life that are going to look at us and say, man, this isn't about those things. This isn't a defeat. This is God teaching you. This is God making you in the, into the man that he wants you to become. We need men that will affirm God's presence in our life. Okay, it's too easy to get caught up. In, in the bad things that are happening. It's too easy to get caught up in everyday life. We need men that are going to bring us back to the fact that, hey, this is about God. This isn't about you. This is about your relationship with Christ. Okay? We need men that are going to do that for us. Next, we need men. If we're going to man up, we need men that will turn up. Okay? Now, my 11-year-old son helped me with this one because I had no idea that turn up meant party. Okay? So, that's the thing today. If you're going to party, you're going to turn up. So, we need men in our life that are going to help us turn up. Men that are going to help us celebrate the victories in our life, only in, in a way that a man can. And because men and women think differently, therefore understand differently, sometimes there are times men that need a celebr- men need a celebration that are, are that the women in our lives don't necessarily understand. Okay? Let me give you another example. We bought our house uh, in Warrington. It's got an acre and a half. And so it came with a, a really nice lawn mower, riding mower, which is great because all I had was this little electric mower that you had to run an extension cord with that I used in Florida. It was like mowing your yard with a sewing machine. And uh, so that knew that wasn't going to work in this big yard in Florida. So it came with this lawn mower. And so I was just thrilled. I'd never owned a riding mower before. And so I'm out mowing. And, and so, uh, you know, after a few weeks or whatever, this thing breaks down. And, uh, I, and so I, I call and I get an estimate on fixing it. I'm like, man, that's that's outrageous. I pay less on my, to fix my car. You know, they want me to pay that on the lawnmower. And I'm thinking, you know, guys all over the planet can fix these little engines. There's no reason why I can't. You know, between YouTube and a roll of duct tape, certainly I can fix this mower. So I looked it up on YouTube. I found out what was wrong and what I needed to do. And I got down on the ground. I got under there, got my hands dirty, and I fixed that mower. And man, I felt like a man when I fixed that mower. I mean, I stood up and I was like, mm, you know. <laughs> I fixed that mower, and so I went in, and I, told, I was going to go in and tell Melinda, thinking she was going to be just as thrilled. I figured she'd grab me by the collar and drag me to the bedroom, but I went in, and I said, man, I fixed that mower. I fixed that mower, and she wasn't as excited about it as I was. You know, she said, that's great, but she wasn't excited about it, you know, cause, probably because she's a woman, you know, and maybe there are women that get excited about lawn mowers, but my wife does not. You know, so I called my brother. And I told him, I said, man, I fixed my lawnmower. He's like, oh, that's awesome. What'd you do? I said, oh, I looked on YouTube, and I got a roll of duct tape, and I fixed my mower. He's like, what kind of mower do you have? I said, it's a Cub Cadet uh, LTX 1050. It's got a hydrostatic engine and a 50-inch 50 50, 50 uh, mowing span. And I don't know what half of that meant, but, man, it just felt good rolling off the tongue, talking to another man. And he just thought, that's awesome, you know, and it felt good. I needed, I needed a man's perspective on that moment of celebration in my life. And guys, there are going to be times as men that we're going to, we're going to have a spiritual victory that we need other men that are celebrating with us. We, we're, we're going to need, we're going to need, uh, you know, we're going to go through things in our marriage or at work or wherever, and we're going to need men celebrating with us. Look at what uh, Jethro did for Moses. It says, then Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, brought a burnt offering and sacrifices to God. Aaron and all the other elders of Israel came out and joined him in a sacrificial meal in God's presence. So they made, they made a sacrifice to God, gave God credit, and celebrated what happened in Moses' life. And then they had a barbecue, you know, man style. 
All right? So we need men in our life that are going to, to celebrate with us the way that Moses or Jethro celebrated with Moses. Next, you need a man in your life that's going to speak up. You need a man in your life that's going to speak up. Moses was doing some things wrong. Jethro was not afraid to talk about it. It says, the next day, Moses took a seat to hear the people's disputes against each other. They waited before him from morning until evening. When Moses' father-in-law saw all that Moses was doing for the people, he asked, what are you really trying to accomplish here? Are you trying... Uh, why are you trying to do all this alone while everyone stands around you from morning until evening? And I love Moses, I love his reply. He goes, because they keep coming to me. You know, they're not going anywhere. They're coming to me, so I have to solve their problems. And uh, so, so Jethro goes on and says, this is not good. So you're going to wear yourself out and you're going to wear out the people too. This job is too heavy for you. Okay? Jethro was bold enough to speak up and say, Moses, you're doing this wrong. You're doing it wrong. There's a better way to do this. And we need men in our life that will speak up and tell us you're doing this wrong. And then he, he looked out for his physical and emotional well-being. He said, he said, this is not good for you. He said, you're going to wear yourself out. We need men in our life that are going to look out for our physical and emotional and our spiritual well-being. We need men in our life that are going to say, you need to stop doing what you're doing. Then it says, you're going to wear the people out too. We need men looking out for our relationships. We need men in our life, and we need to be in other men's life, and we need to be bold enough to say and to hear men tell us things we need to hear. You know? We need, we need, we need to have men in our life that are going to say things like, you never should have talked to your wife that way. You need to apologize. That was dishonest, what you did at work. You need to make that right. You know, you're drinking a little too much. You need to cut back. You're going to hurt yourself, and you're going to destroy your family. We need men that are in our life that we can trust and that we love and that are bold enough to tell us the truth. Pretty sure a woman started that. That's okay. It's okay. Okay? Next, we need, we need men in our life that are going to fill up. Okay? To fill up, to fill in the gaps in our life. You know, Moses led, Mo, Moses led by feelings. Okay? He, was, he was driven by his feelings, and that's fine. A lot of great leaders are driven by their feelings, okay? but that leaves some gaps that other people need to fill in. You know, and and if, you're, if you're married or you've got uh, um, or engaged or whoever, whatever that important woman is in your life, guys, I'm not, I'm not saying that she's not filling in the gaps in your life, and, and they do. You know, Rocky Balboa was right when he said, somebody asked him, what do you see in Adrian? He goes, gaps. I got gaps, she's got gaps, together we fill each other's gaps. That's what marriage is supposed to be. You complete each other, okay? But there are going to be some things in your life, uh, men, that a, 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 your wife cannot fill, that a man needs to fill. Just like, ladies, there are, some things, there are some gaps in your life that your husband cannot fill that you depend on a close group of ladies to fill, okay? You depend on your sisters. You, you depend on your real sisters, your mom, your sisters in Christ or whatever. You know, men need that too. All right? And look at what, Je- look at what uh, Jethro did for Moses. He said, select from the people uh, some capable, honest men who fear God and hate bribes. Okay? Men of integrity. Appoint them as leaders over groups of 1,000, 100, 50, and 10. Connect groups. Boom. Okay? He said, they should always be available to solve the people's problems, but ha- if there are major cases, have them bring them to you. Uh, but they decide the smaller problems. They'll help you carry the load, making the task easier for you. If you follow this advice, and if God commands you to do so, then you will be able to endure the pressures, and all these people will go home in peace. There's a better way to do this, okay? So Moses was led by his feelings. He was afraid when God called him to to do this. God, I can't do this. I, I have a stuttering problem. I'm not the man to do this, okay? You know, I was kicked out of Egypt, okay? God told him you could do it. He was angry. He let anger get the best of him. And one time he looked at God and he said, you know what? This would be a lot easier if you killed all the Israelites and let me wander around the wilderness for 40 years. He said that to God. He was angry. This time he was led by compassion. Okay? All these people were coming to him. And Jethro said, why are you doing this? He goes, because they keep coming to me. You know, he was, he was led by that compassion. But Jethro was there and bold enough to say, man, there's a better way to do this. And Jethro filled in the gaps for Moses. Okay? And so, guys, I say all this to say that, that we, need, we need men in our life. We need men in our life that are going to uh, speak up and listen up. And they're going to point us to God. They're going to affirm God's presence in our life. And they're going to tell us when we need to make some changes in our life. As men, we need that. You know? 
We're not wired that way. It doesn't come natural for most of us, but we need it. So today I want to challenge you. If you're, if you're a guy here and you don't have that band of brothers, man, it, it's, time to, it's time to start, start gathering those guys together. Time, time to make it happen. And, and at Park Valley Church, we can help you do that through our Connect Group ministry. We've already got groups of guys, and we've got new groups of guys that are starting. Okay? And we'll help you connect with those groups of guys. But my, you know, my theory is that most of us are already in a group of some kind, and we just don't realize it. You know, it might be the guys you play cards with or the guys you go bowling with, the guys you go hunting with or whatever. You've already got a group of guys that you associate with. Let's just take that group of guys and put Jesus in the middle of it, and we'll help you do that. You know, we'll equip you to, to, to organize that and, and with all those guys contributing, that you just, you just start seeking God's face together, you know? And we'll help you do that. And so there's opportunities here. And, and I just want to challenge every guy, if you're not in a group, if you don't have that band of brothers, today's the day to start doing that. You know, but some of, some of us might be here, and the first relationship we need to think about is that relationship with Jesus. And that, that's got to be the priority. Because whatever, whatever's happening in your life right now, the solution is a relationship with Jesus. The men in your life, the women in your life, they're going to help you through with those things, but the solution is a relationship with Jesus. And, and God would not, God, God made it very simple for us. You know, he wouldn't hang your eternal salvation on something complicated. It's very simple. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. It's that simple, you know? So today, with every head bowed and every eye closed, nobody looking around, if you're here today and you've, you've never accepted Christ as your Savior, like I said, it's easy, and you can do that today. And, and you can pray something like this and, and, and verbalize that in your heart and in your mind and pray something like this and just say, Dear God, thank you for sending Jesus. I know that there's nothing I could do on my own to earn your love, to earn your forgiveness, and to earn your salvation. Thank you for sending Jesus to pay the price for my sin by dying on the cross. Thank you that he was buried and rose again on the third day so that I can have forgiveness and eternal life. So today I choose to follow Jesus and I confess that I'm a sinner and I ask for that forgiveness and I choose to follow Jesus. Thank you for joining us today on our live stream. If you have any questions about your next steps, we'd love to connect with you. Please visit parkvalleychurch.com slash next step. If this ministry has had an impact on your life, then join us in reaching others by going to parkvalleychurch.com and going to the giving tab. You can also give online through our app. There's all kinds of things going on at Park Valley Church and we'd hate for you to miss out. So be sure to check out the events page on our website or go to the events page on our app. We're so glad you joined us today. Thank you for being a part of what God is doing here at Park Valley Church.